Welcome back to P1. Today we are looking at radian measure. So up until this point, we've dealt with things in terms of degrees. If you were in the last few years of school, probably going back four or five years or further, you've always been dealing with degrees as a unit of measure for angles. And we know that there are 360 degrees in one circle. So essentially a circle is split up into 360 equal pieces. And that brings us on to the radian. Now the radian isn't split in a circle up necessarily into equal pieces like we did with the degrees. What the radian did was think right let's look at the size of a radius of a circle so we have a radius and let's look at the angle we get when the radius is the same size as that arc length and that is the definition of one radian so one radian is when the arc length is the same size as the radius now we often call this so i'll put it in fold here one radian this can also be written as one rad in short or sometimes one and it's kind of like a little c or half a circle for the degrees if you think of it that way and this leads us on to the fact then that there will then for be two pi radians in a full circle okay which will mean that pi radians would be equal to 180 degrees or one radian will be 180 divided by pi so let's first have a look at converting degrees into radians so if I have 150 degrees, like this first one, and I want to convert it into radians, then what I want to do is I want to multiply it by pi and divide by 180. And what I'm doing here is pi and 180, they're essentially the same thing, aren't they? 180 degrees is the same as pi radians. This isn't changing the size of this, Theoretically, it's just changing then its type of unit. So what I want to do is I want to simplify that fraction and make it a nice fraction of pi. So simplifying this, I will get down to 5 over 6 pi. So looking at the second one, 40 times pi by 180. So again, we're looking at this 40 over 180. You can think about dividing by the tens. We've got 4 over 18, so this is going to be 2 over 9 pi. Third one, 60 times pi by 180, or 60 over 180 pi. We can cancel the zeros, nice and easy there, and 6 goes into 18 three times. So we have one third pi, or sometimes we just write this as pi by three. Question number four, 36 times pi by 180. So the same principle each and every time. Like I know 18 will go into this top one twice. That gives me two over 10, which is one over 5 pi or pi by 5. Now in this one we're going to convert from radians to degrees. So let's start with this question 5 pi by 10 and like the last one we're multiplying by essentially the same thing but this time we're going to multiply by 180 over pi. So again thinking of this 180 is the same as pi Pi is obviously in radians, 180 is in degrees, but they're worth the same thing. And this one, you can see then the pi's will cancel. Okay, so 
pi on the top, 180 on the bottom, if you are converting to radians. 180 on the top, pi on the bottom, if you're converting to degrees. So here we've got the pi's will cancel, 10 will cancel with that, and this is actually leaving me 18 degrees. So again, pi by 6 multiplied by 180 over pi. Pi's are going to cancel. 6 will also cancel with the 18 three times, or the 180, let's put it up there, 30, leaving me 30 degrees. And this process is the same each time. So the pi's will cancel. 3 goes into 180. 60 times and then I've got four times that's a four sixes are 24 so four sixties are 240 and then finally three pi over five times 180 over pi pi is a cancel in five goes into 180 36 times so we've got three times 36 there which is 108. Now with these ones, there is another way of looking at it. So this works if it's already in terms of pi. And it's just simply swapping the pi for 180. So if you look here, if I just swap that pi for 180, I get the same answers. So 4 times 180 over 3. Okay, and each time you'll still get the same answers as above. Now this works when you've got the pipe there. Okay. So you're just swapping the pi for 180. So it's just an additional way of working these out. Now, often the angles aren't always nice. And when they're not nice, we obviously have to use our calculators. So this time, we'll take our angle 16, multiply it by pi over 180. And this one it could have simplified it somewhat because of the even numbers. Um, but anyway, so in the calculator to three significant figures, we'll do all these answers. Two point, zero point, sorry, two, seven, nine. So number 10, we've got seven times pi by 180. And obviously, this is, none of this is difficult in kind of terms of the difficulty. It's usually remembering whether you're times in by pi over 180 or whether you're times in by 180 over pi. That's the bit that most people find difficult. So you just got to remember which way around. If you change into radians, you want that radians, the pi on the top. Change into degrees, you want the degrees on the top. So it's nice and easy as long as you learn which way round it is. So there we are, three answers, all to three significant figures. And then going the other way, so we have 2.5, remember this time we times by 180 divided by pi. And this will give us one, four, three degrees. And again, I'll do all of these to three significant figures. So 0 0.8, times by 180 divided by pi and this one is 45.8 degrees and then finally 1.08 times by 180 divided by pi and this is 61.9 degrees now some people might actually have been asking or thinking do I need my calculator in radian mode Okay, so in your calculator, there's two main modes that we use for angles at A level, and these are degrees, which begins with a D at the top of your screen, your calculator screen, or an R for radians. 
when I'm just converting between angles, it doesn't matter which one I'm in. It matters which one I'm in when I'm using sine, cos, tan, inverse sine, inverse cos, inverse tan, and so on. Okay, so if I'm using the trig identities, or if I'm doing further maths and using the hyperbolic ones, it does make a difference what units I'm in. I do need to be careful with that, but for this, when I'm just converting, it doesn't matter. Hopefully you found this useful so far. I'll give you a few questions to try yourself on this, and as always, I'll put the answers at the end. Don't forget, if you haven't already, hit the subscribe button, and if you want to be notified of the next video, just hit that bell icon.